And hi there, this is Rapping with Lieberman. I'm John Lieberman. We have a very special guest tonight. Big talent out of LA, Chris Jones. He's known as Jonesin, and he is joining us from LA. Chris, good to see you. John, good to see you too. Thank you for having me. Now, at one point, Chris, your career, I understand, was almost over. Tell us about that. Why and how did you reignite it? Well, it was definitely almost over. And uh, to cut a very long, long story short, I was a member of a touring hip hop group for a lot of years. We were pretty successful, did all right. And then um, I just got lost in an alcohol addiction and was almost dead, went to rehab, brought my recording studio. Right before rehab, the group had broken up. At that point, I had decided I was going to keep going as a solo artist. And in rehab, I, I was allowed to bring my recording studio with me. So I, uh, I just, I, I never gave up, I guess is the answer to your question. Quitting was never an option. And music is just something that I, uh, that I love to do. I've done it since I was a kid. And uh, so I just didn't give up, you know, reinvented myself, you know, changed who I was as a person, you know, getting sober and um, boom, there you go. Just kept moving and, and things started to you know to click to work which is it's been uh it's been nice did the music help get you through rehab or could you not even think was that the driving force that got you through uh yes and no music is certainly a, a therapy for me um you know to express yourself and, and get things off, off your chest and on paper and then to turn that into into music is uh it is very therapeutic but um i i want to say at first when i got there it was it was really more of what kept me going and allowed me to like be comfortable enough to stay there were i almost got kicked out i wanted to leave for probably the first month month and a half and, and it was just really turbulent and but having that studio definitely helped keep me where i was and then towards the end as time went past i stayed there for three months um, things started to change. You know, I started to slowly change and I, I had gotten enough time away from, from drugs and alcohol and my brain started to work again. Um, but at first, it, music definitely kept me in treatment. All right, we're going to get to the portion of our show now that we call The Rap. And so let me ask you straight out, Chris, who's the best rapper out there today in your opinion? Best rapper out there today? Oh my God, there's so many. I mean, um, I still think, I mean, Eminem just released a new song for, uh, it's, a, it's a theme song for some movie called Phenomenal. And I mean, man, I mean, he just went in. I really don't think that you can beat Eminem still to this day. Um, What's the biggest difference, would you say, between East Coast rap and, uh, and, and West Coast rap? Who I think the beats, you know, I think that the beats are are different. Um, you know, West Coast has that West Coast sound. East Coast has that East Coast sound. And uh, I mean, that's I would sum it up like that. I mean, I'm sure the lyrical content is is different, um, but you know, is what it is, man. Beats. I'm gonna say beats. Final answer. <laughs> okay, that's your final answer now. We're talking about beats, so give us a beat. Drop us a rhyme. Give us a little something of either something you're working on or yeah. something that you've, that you've done. I'm, I know I'm putting you on the spot here. You, you are putting me on the spot. Okay, um, so I'm live with Lieberman. Good thing I'm always ready. 80s baby, I studied belly in the Machiavelli. At age 12, I've seen them handcuffs already. I've been writing way before this was ever trendy. I'm not content with average. You see me up in standards. Y'all just comedy rappers, a bunch of Danny Tanners. People ask me how I do it, I don't know the answers. I'm going hard up in the paint like it's all that matters. Mess around, cop a flagrant, smack a forward backwards. This verse is hanging on the rim until it shatters. And there you go, there's something off the new EP right there. That's good, that's good. We're going to get back to that new EP uh, and talk about it in just a couple of minutes. But first, we're going to get to the part of our program we call the one-on-one -on -one rap. That's where we talk to our guests about some uh, news issues that are going on in the world today. So, Chris, let's start with this. Right. ISIS claims it can smuggle a nuclear weapon into the U.S. Do you buy that? 
Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, I don't see, I don't see why not. Do they? Does does ISIS keep you up at night? I mean, is that a big fear of yours? No, no. I mean, it's a, it's a reality. But um, look, man, it, it, the threat exists. I, I, you know, I don't think that you can deny that. But you know, do, do, do I want to spend my time like thinking about it twenty four seven? No, man. I got other things I'm trying to do. You know, um, who knows? But no, it doesn't consume me. You know, in my day to day. Let me ask you this, this Caitlyn Jenner situation, how significant is it in your mind? It's not. I mean, again, it's what I don't, you know, good, good for him, good for her, whatever you want to say. Uh, do what you do, be yourself. Um, you know, and I, I do think that the benefit to it is that it's one of those things where my guess is that a lot of people struggle with the same kind of thing, some kind of identity, this, that, the other. I don't know if you want to call it identity crisis or not, right. but not feeling comfortable in their own skin, you know? And so when somebody who's in the public spotlight, you know, like, like that is strong enough to, to make that move and do that, then I think that that can bring hope to some other people, you know? So I think that that is the good thing, but just like anything else, um, I, you know, pop culture media, we, we spend too much time on it. You know, I was reading uh, just the other day that like Akon, who's a rapper, just started some solar program in Africa to provide like solar power to like 600 million something people. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't covered in one news cycle. And this guy's like changing the face of the world. And, you know, Bruce Jenner's getting boobs put on and that's all over the place, you know? You know, I've said that. I've said that. One reason why we started this show was because... You know, rappers always write about issues that are going on in society and, and serious issues they don't all do. Uh, they don't all, all change the world like the rapper you just alluded to, but nobody really listens to the rap community. Why do you think that is? The image, man. The, the image that, and the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? But Stereotypes, the, uh, maybe? Yeah, the, sure. Yeah. Sure, that, that works. You know, but there's... um. There's an image and a stereotype that goes along with hip hop, you know what I mean? And and unfortunately, that's uh, gang banging and this, that, the other, and whatever. So, you know, it's uh, people don't take that that seriously, you know. So when some, you know, a rapper is talking about some worldly issue, people, I, my guess is just tune right out, don't even pay attention to, you know, what they're saying. Um, yeah, you you bring up you bring up a really good point. Let's get to politics quickly. Do you think Hillary Clinton is beatable? Yes, why not? You know, why not? I personally, I, Hillary Clinton does not have a trustworthy face to me. You don't think her face is true? Did you like Bill Clinton? I did like Bill Clinton, as a matter of fact, yeah. I still like Bill Clinton. He's got charisma, he's, char he's charismatic. Whether or not he's a good president, good po I mean, he's a good politician, I think, but yeah. good president, who knows? But I like him, you know, something about What's the biggest issue facing the U.S. today, would you say, Chris? Global warming. And why do you think more isn't being done about global warming? Because it's become so politicized? I think that, I mean, this is a very kind of skeptical, almost underground viewpoint, but I think there's, you know, powers that be. There's too much money in, in other things to, to really prevent that change too many people are in too many other people's pockets to to do something real about it and people don't want to hear it people it's just one of for whatever reason it's one of those things that you can know is real but you're not concerned about you know what i mean right because it doesn't sometimes it doesn't feel like it's right here it, right. you know it will be in a couple generations Right, you know what I mean exactly. It's like you can see a photo of the the polar ice caps melting, but that's not in your backyard. But once it is in your backyard, rest assured, you're going to think it's real. Absolutely. All right, we're going to get to the portion of our show now that we call wrap it up. We're going to get to Chris's uh, projects that he's working on in just a second. But first, this is from the website that sponsors this program, EveryJoe.com. The headline is sexual consent. The dual responsibility no one is talking about. Quote, 
sexual consent's a two-way street and no one's talking about this. While there are no lack of sources willing to rightfully stress the importance of only engaging in sexual relations with someone with their consent, one very big factor is not only being omitted, but is also being excused away the responsibility of the person giving consent to be sure they are doing so meaningfully and responsibly. Your thoughts on that, Chris? Uh, yeah, you know what? I feel like um, certainly if you're going to give it up, give it away, make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. I'm sure, you know, uh, pure pressure exists, you know, and I, I've personally, I've done things when I was a kid, you know, uh, not sexual things, but stuff because I felt pressured into it. And I imagine that that's a bigger issue for the younger population, but uh, it's real. All right, Chris, tell us what you're working on and what your fans can expect. Give us a sense of that. Man, right now it's all about The Party Ain't Over, Volume 2. The Party Ain't Over is my movement, um, you know, and it's about never giving up. It's about the underdog, a comeback. So The Party Ain't Over, Volume 2 just came out on Tuesday, so almost a week ago now. It dropped on June 2nd. That's a free download at jonesandmusic.com, J-O-N-E-Z-E-N, music.com. So we're pushing that hard. I have a new video coming out on MTV Jams uh, mid-June. I just shot another video yesterday. That'll drop, you know, July. And so right now the focus is uh, push the project, push the singles and the videos associated with the project. I just did a little mini tour last week and, uh, you know, looking to do, get some more shows lined up. And, um, you know, that's, uh, that's really kind of what's going on in a nutshell. Would you rather be live than in the studio? Which do you prefer more? Ooh, you know, performing live is, it's the time when I am least, it, I should say this, I am most present, period, on stage. It's the only time in my day where I'm not thinking about what I have to do, what's next, this move, that move, the other. I'm completely in the moment. Um, and uh, there's something magical about being on stage, man. It's powerful. And I, I love that. But I can't, you know, I perform on stage the songs that I write in the studio. And I love creating the content as well. Uh, but if someone said to me this, hey, would you rather perform for the rest of your life or make songs in the studio the rest of your life? I would say perform. Wow. That's, that's so interesting because you hear both things from performers. Some dread being live i think but they love being in the studio but then you know i would say most love to be on the stage i love to be on the stage absolutely man it's uh it's you know I, you're, you're a performer of sorts and i think mm -hmm. you can relate you know yeah absolutely absolutely i'm uh i'm much more palatable when i'm not on microphone or on the screen but <laughs> Let me, before we let you go, Chris, if somebody is sampling your music uh, who isn't familiar with your work, what do you think they'll come away with or what do you hope that they come away with? Dude goes hard, man. I, you know, I think that if you listen to the songs, you're going to, you know, say, that's real. You know, like, oh, oh, that's, that's, that's that stuff right there. That's my hope, you know, and then if you dive further into the story and you research me a little bit and listen to some of the songs that, um, for example, songs that I, we're not pushing to radio and things like that, you then, then you get a sense of me and my story. And once you have that, then it's a deeper connection. Uh, and you say, man, I feel that guy on like a whole new level now. Great. Well, Chris came highly recommended from a good friend of mine, Heather. So we're very glad that he joined us on this program. You can follow him on Twitter at the address right there on your screen, at Jones and Music. And please go download Chris's uh, latest work, and uh, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Chris, thanks for your time. Mr. Lieberman, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Absolutely, and thank you for watching. This has been another presentation of EveryJoe.com. Wrapping with Lieberman. More great guests next time. For now, we will see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.